Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to the Thursday morning live edition of Bailey the Bookman. Of course, coming to you live from Bailey Books here in St. Albert, Alberta. It's 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time here. Um, and thanks very much for uh, jumping in. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, bookbinding, uh, some of the tools and some of the processes that we use to make uh, and repair books. Um, a little background. Oh, but first, first we have to do our, uh, just remember, be safe out there, be considerate out there, uh, be smart, uh, stay home. That being said, I know I travel from home to come to the store, but I get in the vehicle, I drive straight here, uh, head of security and I come in, we lock the door and uh, here I am. And then when we're done, we go straight home. So if you can stay home, be safe uh, and consider it. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about book binding, some of the tools, some of the processes um, that we use to make and repair books. Um, a little background. I learned uh, the art of and craft of book binding at the uh, American Academy of Bookbinding in Telluride, Colorado. Um, I started about, oh my gosh, seven years ago, I want to say, <laughs> uh, with some really, really excellent people. Um, they have a wonderful little school down there. Uh, classes are, you know, 12 people, something like that. And we have uh, some of the very best uh, instructors in, uh, in the entire world down at the American Academy. Um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, I would suggest that you uh, you Google American Academy of Bookbinding, check them out. Um, of course, classes are suspended at this point in time. Um, maybe uh, something will will come up uh, for the fall. I mean, who knows, right? These days, things uh, change so rapidly. Uh, you just have to kind of play it by ear. Okay, so bookbinding it is an ancient uh, craft. Um, believe it started in the uh, the Middle East and there are all sorts of uh, types styles of book binding uh, there's French there's German there's Italian Middle Eastern um, the style that uh, I learned in uh, Telluride let me do this <clears throat> is that better um, morning Rob morning D uh, those are the two people that have to watch this, by the way. <laughs> Monday, you're back. <laughs> oh, great. The connection's clear today. Ah. Okay, let's get through this quick before it goes to you know what. Um, so, yes, all of these different styles. Uh, the basic style um, I was taught by uh, Don Glaster uh, in Telluride was uh, French with... Uh, a Don Glaster twist, so we call it kind of North American uh, French combo bookbinding, whatever that means. Uh, and one of the things I've learned since I started bookbinding is that um, it's almost, I mean, there, there's prescribed steps you want to take when you, when you bind a book. Um, but uh, it, there's also lots of room for your own style, your own inventiveness, your own creativeness. Um, and many of my classmates mates, um, are really, uh, and Don, are, uh, and Monique Lallier, our, our other instructor, uh, or one of our other instructors, uh, are, are really book artists. Um, at the end of the day, what they've created uh, is really uh, a piece of art. Um, and, you know, 99% of the time it's functional. It's a book but it is really a beautiful piece of art. I am not there. I am learning still. Um, I actually haven't had a, uh, well, I've had one um, commission to, uh, to rebind a book in leather and it turned out, turned out well, actually. Um, but I have, I have some uh, a ways to go before uh, I can, I can get to the level uh, that I'd like to be at. So what do you do? Uh, more headroom. There we go. Uh, what do you, <laughs> so how do you, how do you build a book? Well, there's a few different steps and, and we're going to do a real quick Coles notes here today. I don't want to be here for an hour again today. It's kind of time got away on me there on Tuesday. It's not hard. Um, 
so there's some, like I said, there's some very basic steps. Uh, first of all, you have to decide on on the book. Are you going to make rebind a book like this one that I'm working on? This is um, like I showed this once, maybe twice before. It's uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World. It is the first Canadian edition published in 1912. Um, and I've decided I rescued the text block, which is, you know, that part, right? All the text block, everything else I have added in. So, or you could, and I showed an example uh, with Deanna's book the other day, I, uh, I bound her a journal. Um, and for those, you start right from scratch. You have big sheets of paper, arches paper, specifically used for book binding. And you end up, so you take, you fold, you make your, uh, your sections. I'm just going to, here, undo that. So these are all sections that I've cut, folded, and pressed into sections, right? So they go in like that. They're all trimmed nice and neat. Oftentimes, folks will leave this foredge rough uh, or the top edge rough. There's all sorts of variations you can use on that. So depending how thick of a book you would really want to have, uh, you make it as big or as little as you want. And then you have to sew it together. So uh, the sewing process itself has, let me think, uh, eight steps alone, just to get this sewn together. So um, I'm just gonna refer to my notes. Uh, four, four page blank signatures, and that's what we have here. Uh, then you have to add, um, your waste paper signatures, these ones, these will come out uh, much later on in the process. They just get yanked out. They're there to protect the end papers. This nice paper that I selected and added in when I sewed this text box together. Okay, then you decide on the edges. Um, as I mentioned, you press these overnight because you want the spine edges as absolutely thin and tight as you can. Um, because you have to uh, mind the swell. We'll talk about that as we go. Um, you have to collate the text. Um, a really good thing you want to have it to get into is to, on the spine edge, you take, mark it with a pencil across like that so that you have, when you're sewing these together, you'll that line should obviously line up as you go and sew each section. Um, you divide these into thirds before you start sewing. So you take one, two, three piles, um, and then you start sewing the first third together. So what do you use? Let me show you. You use one of these. Oh, crap. Unrehearsed. So this is a sewing frame. There we go. And um, so you place your your first third. Well, you get your strings here. Um, you decide. Are you going to use these? This kind of uh, material. You decide how many you're gonna gonna need. You put it all, line it all up on the sewing frame. You set your first one in, and you get ready to go. But before you get there, you have to decide how many holes are you gonna punch along the spine edge to sew your. Uh, your uh, string in there. Well, you have a French template guide and you take your piece of paper and you lay it on and these lines will line up where, uh, so if you want three, you want four, you want five, depends on the size of your book, what you're looking for, all sorts of different considerations. You mark it on these and then you're ready to sew. 
first of all, here's my toolbox that I use all the time. So then you have to take, once all of those are marked, you take and you have to punch holes through them, right? So you lay them down and you very carefully push them all the way through. And there's different sizes of these punches and awls that you can use as well. Okay. Um, well, let me back up. You have to make a template like this out of waste and uh, you lay it in and then you take your awl and you punch through. So it's consistent. Each one of these signatures out of your stack are all going to have the exact same holes. So they line up on your sewing frame. Away you go. You can see that this is a very um, methodical step-by-step -step process when you are going to start to find a book. So, um, and then when you are going to sew, it's uh, what kind of thread are you going to use? This is uh, specific. Uh, number this is number 35 you can get this thread in all sorts of different thicknesses again depends on the size of your book and and how many signatures do you have um, the goal is always to keep keep that spine edge as thin as possible right um, and because uh, otherwise the spine edge will be this thick and the fore edge will be that thick. You do not want that. So you have to be very uh, wary and careful. Uh, uh, so sometimes you use much thinner thread. Sometimes you use thicker thread. All depends. Um, okay, so you sew it. You sew it all together. You get a text block. Looks really nice. Um, I don't have one underway at the moment, uh, but it ends up something like this. So see in this, in this book, in the lost world, um, we have three and that's, you know, it fits with the book. It's going to uh, give me spaces to add titles. It's gonna look nice, I hope, I think. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna have to pick up the pace on these. Uh, <laughs> Like I say, each one of these steps has multiple steps built in, decisions you have to make. And uh, often you have to make these decisions ahead of time so that um, you end up with the result that you are looking for and have thought of in your in the design of your book. So um, then you have to select boards. Um, again, we'll look at this one. So you can see the, the thickness of the board should relate to the text block, obviously. Um, I kind of like the thicker look on this particular book. Some people might want to go thinner. Um, it, you know, again, it's, it's up to you. It's an, an aesthetic. Uh, it's your book. You can decide what you want to do with it. Um, so you get your board, you get it all prepped up. Sometimes you have to glue some together. Of course, you have to be careful on the grain of the board so that everything lines up that way. Um, on this particular one, I have sanded down these edges so that there's a bevel to it. So when the leather goes over, it has a really nice look to it. That's a that's a, a dawn a dawn trick. Um, or technique, I guess, not a trick. <laughs> um, then you have to take that text block when it's all sewn and you have to round it and back it. So that is on this, this spine edge. You want to uh, make sure that there is some curve to it because these boards need a little shoulder to fit in. I don't know if you can, this one doesn't have a huge shoulder because it, it didn't originally have a whole lot of rounding and backing to it. So I didn't want to make it do something it didn't want to do. But if you can look down there, you can see right here, there's a little bit of a, and that's where this board, when it closes, will fit in so that it's all smooth around the spine and it looks nice. Um, any questions, by the way, just, uh, just let me know. Uh, the thread looks waxed. Some of it is, some of it isn't. Um, but I had it out. What did I do with it? 
So this is a uh, wax. Uh, whenever I sew, whether the uh, the thread looks waxed or not, I take the piece I'm working on and uh, you just run it through one of these like that. And now this has a nice little coat of wax, right? And that helps immensely when you're sewing through paper. <laughs> you have to be very careful because it wants to tear, right? It's it's paper after all. So this uh, this wax helps with the, the smoothness of, of, of sewing and um, just snugging everything really nice and and making that sewing go smoother. Okay. Um, good Lord, we're already 15 minutes in. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you do the rounding and the backing. Um, and at, uh, at some point, you're going to have to apply these boards to this text box block. So uh, lacing them in. So, team whiz, I wish I had one. Um, I don't. So, um, so these pieces. Remember that we sewed into the text block. They stick up like that, each one of these, once you're finished sewing. So there's, there's a piece on each side of the text block like that. Then that leaves you enough to run that, uh, this material. Uh, you punch some holes in the boards. You run them through, you squish them down, you do some work on them. Um, you, well, I've done it correctly. So you can't see where they have been inserted into the board underneath this because I've also got a piece of uh, arches glued there. You can kind of see maybe a little dent there. I mean, it, it is smooth. So there's no, there's no dent, but you can see where they've been inserted into the board. So that's how you attach them. And at this point of the process, these boards are still a little bit loose. So um, another step coming down the way will set these boards in place where they're going to permanently live because you have to adjust for your, um, what you call it, on the edge. <laughs> I hope Don or nobody, uh, no bookbinders are watching this. Uh, okay, so you apply boards, uh, you consolidate the spine. Uh, that might require uh, gluing some paper in, shaping that up. Um, you need, if you need to trim, you'll need to trim the boards to the right size because, again, you want that uh, edge around around here to be nice and perfect and look good. And then, like I mentioned, sometimes you sand those edges and you do that stuff. Um, headbands, oh my. Uh, that's the neat thing about bookbinding. There uh, are a multitude of skills you need to master to master bookbinding. And sewing headbands is certainly one of them. So as you can see, these are sewn in by hand. So you sew through the text block, come over the top, you use um, I had all this stuff laid out. So let me see, yes. So you cut a little piece of this stuff and you lay it in there and then you sew over and around this at the very top of the spine and you end up hopefully with that so and you have to of course choose your colors now and i chose those colors because this is the color of the piece of leather that i'm going to cover it with so kind of rule of thumb you pick one color to match your your cover Okay, uh, just before we move on, um, the headbands, 
Well, let me let me finish one thing. Here is uh, all sort. These are uh, this is silk and multiple colors, uh, thicknesses, types. Some really beautiful stuff, colors, um, and of course headbands can be as simple as the ones I do, or very very complex where you stack up two of those pieces and it's, it's like oh my, it's like a little little bit of artwork all all unto itself. I'm still doing the very basic ones because I'm the basic kind of guy. So. What do you get when you mix alcohol and literature together? Any ideas? Any ideas? Tequila Mockingbird? <laughs> F. Scotch Fitzgerald. Okay, Rob, those are for you. They're bad. They're dead. <laughs> okay. All righty. Um, headbands. So then you have to do um, further board treatment. So that might be applying uh, some of this covering, sanding the edges, beveling them down, making sure they're all very nice. Um, again, that takes takes a while. Um, you have to line the spine. Um, you, again, you take some uh, some material and you're gonna you're gonna cover that spine to consolidate it, make it. Uh, nice and stiff then you have to sand it down so I lined it with this arches and there's about I don't know three four five layers that you cut and paste in each of these and then you sand them down so they are very nice and smooth and consistent with the with the boards and the text block and also are going to help uh, accentuate the bands here and many books, most books, I guess, depends these days, do not have these bands. I, I really like them. I like that old, that old style look. Um, so there's a, you can do a round back or you can do a hollow back. And that refers to um, how you attach. You can't do, if I recall, uh, a hollow back with the bands. It has to be a round back because a hollow back gives you a little bit of a floating piece along here that uh, makes it a little easier for the for the book to open and close. Um, you're gonna have to do your board lining and stabilization, which I showed you with the papers on the top. Um, this covering, and then uh, leather application. Uh, well, you can see these little tiny notches at the corners. You have to you have to put those in. Um, so here's here's the piece of leather that I'm going to use to cover the lost world. Um, and this is goat leather. It uh, most of it comes from England. It's as expensive as hell. Uh, for instance. Uh, this is a piece I bought <clears throat> uh, last fall when I was in Telluride at the at the school. Beautiful. This uh, doesn't really give color and texture of this justice, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of leather. But um, <clears throat> it's not deep. So this, I, I recall this was like 120 or 30 US, <clears throat> excuse me. Sherlock's on hand again, help me out. So yeah, uh, but it's specialized leather. It's only used for book binding. And uh, that particular piece comes from England. So you cut your, your piece carefully and you know you don't want to waste this stuff um because if you can get two books out of a piece awesome but then you have to take the leather um and it's already um like half cut when they send it but you have to take these edges 
all of the edges that are going to go around the boards and at the head of the spine and the tail of the spine and pare them down as thin as you possibly can without doing that. Yeah, that's a real pain in the patoot having a hole in it. Um, so there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Typically, you use a paring knife, and this is a French paring knife. Um, and like everything in book binding, there's numerous styles of knives you can use. So, and it's a very um, slow, methodical process because, again, if if you slice through this piece of leather at a critical spot, you can almost throw it out. Eh. So, you know, it's expensive. You don't want to waste it. So you go around and, and you trim these edges all down. Get them as thin as you possibly can without cutting through them. And um, I wish I could, I could see this is stiff when you, when you bend it that way. You go out to the edge. And that's how you can tell when it's, when it's getting close to thin enough to apply is when you fold it over. It's easy. It's pliable. Uh, good morning, Rick. How are you? Uh, <laughs> is this a catch and release? Yes, I think. <laughs> We're talking about uh, bookbinding, some of the tools and processes, Cole's notes. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, and these, this might be the sharpest instrument I have ever come across. I just about took the end of my finger off in class one day a few years ago. And you know what, I, I, was, I was sitting there holding it in my hand, we were working away, and I, uh, I, I kind of turned like this, and I, I just brushed my finger across the end of it, and just, you know, I hardly even knew I did it, to all the, yeah, there was a big scene. Anyway, um, I still have all my fingers, thank goodness. So, um, To apply the leather, um, you're going to want to make some very nice, fresh wheat paste. And it is a, a water-based um, product. And this is how it comes in the powder form. It's wheat starch. So depending, there's different, um, there's different kind of ratios you can use. I use seven to one water to a tablespoon. Uh, to make my paste uh, because uh, it just depends on, you know, sea level and that sort of thing. But um, it makes a wonderful, beautiful paste that is, you don't want any lumps in it because that can show through the leather. Um, and you soak it. Leather, this type of leather, really soaks up the moisture uh, well and it retains it and it allows you to work with it um, kind of in a methodical, careful way, uh, you can take your time. So once you get your paste all mixed up, you apply it, you just, you, let, you just absolutely soak the back side of this. Uh, that goes up there. And then um, there's a process. You have a special uh, little uh, pillow thing that you, you, know, you know, kind of lay this down on. and you get the leather wrapped around and tucked in in behind here so that your headbands show and then, uh, um, it's it's kind of a nerve-wracking process because you know you don't want to screw it up um, it's making sure that this is all still going good okay um, and then um, once it's on, uh, they kind of, you can take a, a deep breath and relax, but you're not finished. You still have lots of more work to do uh, once you have it on. Um, you have to uh, form a head cap. Here, let me get a book. This is a book I bound some time ago. So this part right here is the head cap. Um, here, I'll use this. 
So it's the round part that goes around the, the head of the spine, connecting the boards and the spine, uh, all the leather. And you can see how nice and flat and rounded that is. This is another little bit of an arc form because you want it to go on top of the headband, but not to cover it. So it frames it up very nicely. And uh, I managed to actually do that on, on this particular one. You can see. So that's the head cap. Um, and you can see our little notches that we had cut in before. Okay, I'm going to set that there. Um, you have to cut the corners. So you have to open the book. Once, uh, once it's kind of dried enough, there's a, there's a technique that you you uh, use to open the book and you have to be very careful because the leather will uh, want to crack and do all sorts of nasty things, pull away if you're not careful. So book binding is a very methodical, step-by-step, -step, um, kind of a, a thoughtful pro process. It's, uh, uh, it, it makes you <laughs> be patient. Um, you can't rush it. You have to just uh, work with the book because the book will do what it wants to do. So uh, our our job as a bookbinder, as Don says, is just to guide it along. And hopefully it turns out, you know, pretty much the way you wanted it. Um, okay, you have to add uh, paste downs at, uh, at one point. That is this paper. And there's again, there's various methods you can use to uh, to attach these. Uh, this particular instance, uh, the paste down is attached to this uh, free end paper at the rear. And here, um, you have to put hinges in um, to put fly leaves in. Hinges are. Uh, well, just what they sound like. They're little pieces of leather that fit right in here in the gutter. So that, and it's the same color of leather that you obviously used on the rest of the book. Although I suppose you could use different color if you're kind of adventurous. Um, and there you go. It all connects all together. Much of an art as a skill. Absolutely. Uh, I would say it's... Uh, well, I don't know what the ratio would be art to, uh, to uh, skill, but uh, they're very, very closely entwined and you, you can't have, I suppose, <laughs> one without the other. Um, I mean, I'm not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and when I see some of my classmates uh, and instructors like Don and Monique and Peter and all the folks at uh, American Academy Bookbinding, uh, they truly are artists. Um, I'm I'm more of a I'm more of a trades guy, because uh, <laughs> you know, and and it is what it is. I still live very very much enjoy doing the bookbinding. I love creating it. I, I hopefully I will move on to more sophisticated types of uh, of bindings as I get better at it. But the trick is you have to actually do it and. Um, I'm kind of making a pledge to myself that uh, 2020 is the year where I'm gonna I'm gonna get serious and and uh, bind some books and get to work. And toward that end, I ordered um, after my class in uh, Telluride last fall. Uh, one of the, one of my biggest barriers has been uh, applying guilt titles. Um, gonna work I've used this example before, but I'll show you that one of the biggest barriers for me has been um, my ineptitude <laughs> at applying titles, guilt titles. Um, I learned using one of these. So it's type that you set in, you build your title in. Uh, this one says the sun. Son of Tarzan, because uh, that's one of the books that I want to put titles on, and it's uh, it's a whole other process um, using these. 
And I don't know, it was uh, part of the problem was I think I selected the wrong font. It's very small, it's hard to work with. And for someone at uh, the stage I'm at, maybe not the best choice. This is the uh, this is the gold leaf we use. It is like micro micro thin. You actually have to be careful about you know exhaling too hard through your nose, breathing because it just goes. <laughs> it's gold, so it's expensive too. Everything's expensive. <laughs> so, anyways, at my class last fall, um, part of the class was using handle letters. And I found I really, really liked it. Um, so when I got home, I uh, I broke down and uh, made a deal with the CFO, and I bought a set uh, shipped from England. Uh, again, bloody expensive. They're they're made out of brass, but aren't they beautiful? Yeah. So. Uh, so that's the results, the kind of results I was getting before and not very good, right? I mean, this was a practice volume, all that, but I was really disappointed in how that looked. And, and to be honest, it was a barrier for me to move forward, finishing some books that I had underway. So um, I'm going to master the handle letters. Um, I had some good results in class. I'm uh, much more confident now. And uh, yeah, we're going to, we're just going to, forge ahead and, uh, and find more books and uh, have some fun doing it. Um, let me see. Uh, don't sell yourself here. Your... <laughs> oh, thanks, Rick. <laughs> you think my talent is phenomenal? You should see my classmates. Like uh, the gentleman, he was my classmate, Mike. I, uh... We were... Uh, Classmates and uh, condo mates uh, last fall in Telluride, and uh, Mike Prevett, the best bookbinder in all of Kentucky, let me tell you. This man is talented. Uh, so we swapped shirts. I gave him a Bailey the Bookman shirt, and he gave me one of his the Dusty Jacket t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> so he... Uh, He's an excellent bookbinder, and he is phenomenal, uh, as as many of my classmates uh, are. But I'll keep working at it and uh, having fun. I mean, uh, if you can't have a little bit of fun, what's the point of doing it, right? Um, I like it. It's enjoyable. Uh, it's a it's a wonderful skill. Uh, I don't think you ever really quite truly master it. There's always something new to learn, different techniques to try. And uh, if you've never tried it or, uh, or uh, looked into it, I would highly recommend it. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun and it's very rewarding. Okay, uh, if there are any other uh, questions, comments, uh, I think we're going to wrap it up for today. Um, really appreciate you, you tuning in. And uh, if you're local here in St. Albert, you need a book. Um, you know, we're all stuck at home looking for things to do. Uh, Reach out, give me a call. The email is baileybooks at telus.net. Um, all of my books are uh, available on uh, baileybookman.com. You can look through all of the stock that we carry here in the store. And um, if you would like to subscribe to this channel, it's free. <laughs> what do you get for free these days? That would be lovely. Would appreciate your support uh, as a subscription. Um, you're very welcome, Rick. I really appreciate you uh, tuning in. And uh, I'll be back Saturday morning. I am doing these Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday mornings, 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And um, yeah, why not? I mean, we're all stuck at home. So let's get together. We'll talk about books and book stuff and and uh, spend a little time together, uh, you know, other than uh, sitting, drinking wine and watching TV. Uh, will your video be on your... I believe so. Um, I did some last week that are still up there. I think they just stick in the archive. Um, uh, Rob might be able to answer that for us. I am uh, not very bright when it comes to all the tech stuff. I just stand here and talk. <laughs> okay, um, that's it for today. Appreciate you tuning in to uh, this live episode of Bailey the Bookman. 
be safe, be smart, be considerate, stay home, and uh, we'll get through this before we know it. Uh, there we go. I am correct. Thanks, Rob. Okay, we'll see you Saturday morning, 1030. If you have some ideas about what you'd like uh, to see here on the on the channel or some topics or some books or whatever, send me a note, let me know, and we'll see if we can do that for you. Okay, thanks, Rick. You stay well, too. Everyone be safe. We'll talk to you soon.